Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to review another entry-level budget-friendly quadcopter from Furby. This is the Furby Nebula 230. I've got the FR Sky version and its specs are very similar to the X215 Pro quadcopter from Furby as well and in this video I'm going to show you the differences, set it up and then take it for a test flight and see how it performs. Inside the box we've got the quadcopter, one set of spare propellers, these are 50-42 propellers, and in addition an RPSMA linear antenna. This is the same antenna that was included with the Furby Dark Max and in my test flight it actually performed pretty well, so I will use it also on the test flight of the Nebula 230. The motors of the Nebula are 2205, 2600 kV motors. Unlike the X215, it doesn't have a 4-in-1 ESC controller, so it has separate BLLES 20 ampere ESC controllers. On the bottom we have a PDB, then an F4 flight controller, and on the top we've got a switchable 0, 25 milliwatt and 300 milliwatt VTX. And unfortunately, it's the same one that was included with the X215. It didn't perform well, and I think that Furby should stop the use of this VTX because the total package is pretty nice and this VTX kind of ruined things up. So in this video, I'm going to add the same mode that Fire SG done, and I'm going to use some aluminum wrap underneath in order to reduce the interference and hopefully it will help. If not, I will probably change it to another VTX. The front camera is a 700 TV line CMOS camera. I don't think it's going to perform as well as the 1200 TV line CCD camera that both X215 and Furby Dark Max are equipped with. But of course, I will have to take it outdoors and test it out in order to see how it performs. The weight of the Nebula is 309.6 grams. So it's about 30 grams lighter than the Furby X215 Pro and just a little bit heavier than the Furby Dark Max. So the first thing you should do after receiving this quadcopter is to remove the propellers. They're not fastened, so it's pretty easy to do. And always remember to remove the propellers before configuring your quadcopter because things can and probably will go wrong. So just make sure to remove them. So let's open the top part and see what we've got underneath. The receiver that I've got is the FR Sky XM receiver. They didn't include the XM Plus like the Furby X215. Over here, as I told you before, we've got this infamous VTX, which I'm going to take off and then put some aluminum foil underneath in order to reduce the video noise. And anyway, you will probably have to remove this top part, first of all, to ban your receiver, and second of all, also to configure the VTX because it's a little bit hard to configure it when the top is present. So let's just remove the VTX. So I just wrapped some aluminum foil and put it in this little plastic bag in order to isolate it. Don't do it without the bag because the aluminum is conductive and can lead to some problems with your VTX or might burn something up. So I'm just going to place like that underneath the VTX and hopefully it will help. I can of course change the VTX but I want to fly it with this VTX because you want to see the performance of this quadcopter right out of the box. So this is just a little modification and if it performs well you won't have to buy a new VTX and replace it yourself. Now everything is back in place. I'm going to put an antenna and power on the VTX in order to set it on F7. Just as a reminder never power a VTX without an antenna being connected because you might burn the VTX. So let's power it up. By the way, you should use with this quadcopter batteries between 3 to 4S. 3S maybe if you're a beginner and you want to fly a little bit slower and 4S is recommended after you are going to be a little bit more trained. You can hear that the buzzer is muted because there is a sticker on top. Let's set up the VTX. Setting the channel is done by short pressing this button over here. I'm going to set it on 7. Setting the band is done by short pressing this button twice. I'm going to set it on B and in order to change the output strength you have to press it three times and then you can select high 300 milliwatts, low which is 25 or zero which is zero milliwatts. And now the FPV is working. The next thing we need to do is to bind the FR Sky receiver. In order to do so you will need to put your Taranis on D16, channel range 1 to 16. 
then hit the bind button. Then you'll need to connect the battery to the quadcopter while pressing the bind button, which is located over here. By the way, the receiver will be turned on also when it will be powered through USB. So I think it's easier to just plug the micro USB on one end and then just plug the other end to a computer while pressing this button. If you don't have anyone else to help you, I think it's a little bit easier. After you're done, just hit exit. And in order to make sure that the quadcopter is bound, just connect the battery. You can see that only the red indicator is on. And if you will turn off your transmitter, you can see that now the left one is on, which means the quadcopter got disconnected and the bind process was successful. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to wrap everything up, then go through the configuration on Betaflight, then take it for a test flight. So I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it to give you my conclusion.
as you could see, the Furby Nebula 230 didn't fly so great and it's not a great flyer out of the box. I had to change the VTX to the Ishin TX5-6, to which you can see it's a little bit cramped inside, but it still worked. And after changing the VTX, the range was much better because with this not successful VTX, I could get probably 50 meters or so. So I hope I'm not going to start a collection and these are the two last VTX from this company that I'm going to see. And Furby, as I told you in the beginning of the video, stop using this VTX. You just ruin it for yourself because you have a good product and the consumer expects to get a good quality product out of the box and these VTX are just no good. Even after that, I think that the quadcopter needs some tuning. Even after I upped the rates, I think that it actually upped the rates too high and I should still do some more tunings and lower down the rates, do some PID tunings. I don't have enough time to do it in this video and hopefully I will be able to do it in the near future and I will put it in the description of this video. But unfortunately, probably it's not going to happen soon. In addition, the camera is not very great and I think that the camera that was used in the x 15 Pro and also in the Furby Dark Max was much better, brighter and the general FPV experience was much better. This is a 700 TV line CMOS camera whereas this one is a CCD camera and the difference in the quality is actually very noticeable. You might have noticed that the voltage sensor didn't work properly. It was set to 11.9 or 12 volts most of the time. And I think it's because it's connected to the 12 volts output of the PDB. I will need to disassemble everything and to confirm it because it just didn't work. So on my flights, I just used a buzzer that was connected to the battery because I couldn't modify it on the go. If you do happen to find the Nebula 230 on sale, let's say for 100 or 120 dollars, I don't think it's such a bad buy, but you have to take into consideration that you probably will need to change the VTX and also to tune the quadcopter. So if you find the X215 or the Dark Max in a better price, I would go with the X215. And my actually favorite ready to fly quadcopter so far is the Furby Dark Max, which I don't have here at the moment. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.